Hello everyone, I uh, just thought I'd make a little video about the P3 paints that I was sent by Steamforge Games to promote their Kickstarter because they are bringing back the range which is very exciting for me because they are some of my favourite paints and they have been my favourite paints since they came out basically. Um, so what I've got now is uh, a little swatch I made of all the ones that I got sent, so 19 in total, unless my counting is wrong, which is entirely possible. Um, we have got, on this side, these are all ones I had existing pots of, so I did a little comparison of them, um, purely for my own interest, more than anything. The colours are pretty similar. Um, the finish is slightly different um on some of these and the drying time was longer that some of these i did end up putting a little bit more on the palette like with exile blue but these two are pretty similar uh arcane blue is pretty similar kato red and heartfire as well the only ones where it's slightly different was audic olive the new one seemed a little bit lighter a little bit i don't know slightly yellower um, then these two old pots, I had two, I had two open pots of Audic Olive still sitting around in, in my paint drawer, so I thought I'd compare both of them. Now, I don't know if it is that different, um, it looks different here, but both of these I have mixed with, uh, Eberschnare in the past, because I used them quite a lot on various different projects, so, eh, it might be just because I've mixed them with stuff, but... It is a little bit lighter. Um, the main one is the cold steel. Um, you can't really tell because of the light reflecting on it, but this new one is a little bit lighter. But the key thing about it is that it is a lot more consistent. Um, the old ones, I always had a problem with them being a bit thin, being a bit yeah, inconsistent. But these new ones are so much better this 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 is a nice smooth silver it goes on clean i'm going to talk about these a lot later when i show you the model which you can see here um moro white as well uh best white paint i've ever used continues to be the best white paint i've ever used um this one here has not got you can't really see it because obviously it's white and white but this one has not gotten um lumpy or separated in all the years of using it and it's even when the lid has sort of started to degrade after way over a decade of me having the paint pot um can confirm the new moro white is good it's still moro white it's still a, it's still a white paint that has not got lumpy or degraded at all um so these other ones here are paints that I've not used myself. I'm not entirely sure if they're new to the range or if they are um, old ones returning, but I've um, got some solid, very solid colours here. Solid, many want to talk about solid coal and boiler black here. Um, solid gold is incredible. I'm going to be talking again about this when I get on to the, um, to the model I've painted, but it's a gold that goes on in one coat like it's a it's <laughs> it's amazing i was telling my friends like this is incredible this is like one of the best golds i've ever used um thing on black it's black absolutely solid uh boiler black i thought was going to be another sort of mid-tone between immortal black and thing black but it's not it's a metallic paint um, a very dark metallic paint and it's the sort of thing I've been looking for again like cold steel and solid gold this is a really good metal metallic paint um, goes on smoothly one coat yeah great um, immortal back um, it's kind of a step up it's it's a good highlight for Thamar black it's not coal black I did not get sent coal black I want coal black Cold Black is one of my favourite paints ever, but I'm working with what, what they sent me, and yeah, uh, Immortal Black is very good. Uh, Sanguine Base um, was the base colour I used on this jack I've painted. Um, it's pretty good. A uh, little thin, 
um, but went on smooth. Took a couple of coats, but went on very smooth. Murderous Magenta was a very good highlight for it. Um, Rock Hide, solid, solid sort of like brown colour. Uh, Blind Water Green, um, didn't use much of it on this model, mainly as a kind of recess shade on the, the, the burgundy, the red. Meridius, I think this is Meridius Blue, um, not entirely sure, but it's, it's a, it's a good, like, sort of, like, shade colour or base colour for Arcane Blue. And finally, Deathless Metal is a dark gold paint, um, sort of tin bits, if you're familiar with old paint lines. Um, it's pretty good. Again, like, the other metallics covers really, really well. One of the issues I had with older, um, P3 paints was the lack of coverage on metallic paints, um, which is annoying because some of them I really like. I think I use the uh, paint brass balls a lot on my Iron Warriors. I think it's got a really nice brassy, slightly greeny colour, but um, like it and Cold Steel and Pig Iron and these other paints I've used previously in the P3 range always had kind of sketchy coverage. These new golds, these new silvers, excellent coverage. I cannot begin to stress how good the coverage on these metallics is. Out of all these paints I've been given, these are definitely the ones who, which have impressed me the most. Anyway, these are the paints that I got sent. I'm pretty impressed with all of them. Um, let's have a look at the model I did. I, uh, I did this out of storage. I was going to paint a, a, a non-war machine model, but I thought I've got this one. Um, and I thought, well, I haven't been given any of the sort of like bone colours, the off-whites. So I, I was like, what am I going to, I can't do this man-off model. But then I realised in War Machine Escalation, there is an alternate paint scheme that uses lots of burgundy and gold. And I thought, well, I have those colours, so let's, let's work with it. Um... So, yeah, like, as you can see, like, the, the main thing that P3 paints have been known for in the past is the quality of the their ability to be blended, and the blends are really smooth here. This is some of my best blending work on the, on here, on the on the legs here, just, just all around, really. Like, I'm really impressed with how easy these are to blend, how easy they are to work with. They've got a pretty generous working time so you can take your time not worry about paint drying on the on the model um so if you get this burgundy i used sanguine base and then went to murderous magenta straight away and then to get going from murderous magenta to kdor red was a bit of a jump so i mixed the two pretty much one to one they mixed really well and uh the mixture stayed where on just a dry palette like this for long enough to do all I needed to do. And then I did a final kind of like edge highlight, um, final shade, final layer with just straight Kato red base. Um, the gold, let's talk about the gold. This pretty much all went in one coat over a grey, um, grey undercoat. Um, anybody who's ever used gold paint ever will tell you that that is wild. Um, <laughs> gold paint does not cover this well. Um, but it yeah this went over in one color in one go um i shaded it with a thinned down rock hide and it worked really well um and then i kind of made a rough highlight of solid gold and morrow white it wasn't the best option for a highlight but like i say i just wanted to paint these with the paints i'd be given um what else should we talk about on here um, okay, the metals, the, this, I used a lot of the, uh, boiler black on the sort of, what I would call the, what I would call the functional metals, the, 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 the robust metals, and I wanted to use cold steel as a kind of alternate on pistons and the head on the mace. Um, again, they went on really well, I used blue to, uh, thin down XL blue to shade these, um, really good uh what else can i talk about um did a fun little gradient in the boiler there um but yeah like considering i was working with um the limitations of these 19 paints 
I had an absolute blast painting this model with a new paint range. Um, I'm really glad they're back. Um, I'm really glad they're back. I, uh, I love using them for pretty much... I can't think of a job that I wor I've worked on since they came out that hasn't included them in some way. Um, they are my favourite paint range. They have been my favourite paint range and they still apparently continue to be my favourite paint range. Um, I'm hoping to get this video up on the day the Kickstarter goes live, um, which is the 10th of September. Um, so hopefully this will go up either when it's gone live or just after. Um, but yeah, big thanks to Steamforge for sending these to me. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, uh, one last note about the paints on the Kickstarter, you can get them either in the classic, you know, white flip lid bottles, or, and this is something I'm very excited about, they are doing them in dropper bottles as well, which is great, because d dropper bottles are great. <laughs> Make things way less messy. So, yeah, um... As I say, thank you for thank you to Steamforge for sending these over and giving me a chance to try them out. Um, there's going to be a link to the Kickstarter underneath wherever I post this, so go follow that and check them out for yourselves. Really good metallic paints now. Everything else feels consistent and um, and just a nice update to the range from before. Um, if you are interested in paints that blend really well and you want to try your blending, absolutely give these a go. Um, they mix really well. They, they're fantastic. I can't say, I can't say enough good things about them. Um, right, yeah, thank you very much for listening and looking at my, the first Warjack I have painted in quite a while, actually. Um, yeah. Possibly a decade. Hmm. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye!